I'll start off with a question, I guess, to my presentation. What makes a human an individual? That's a difficult question, but the answer is very, very simple. What makes a human an individual are the changes that one goes through and the effects it has on one's life. What shape your beliefs, or perhaps your whole identity, are the experiences that you have and your ability to recall these experiences. Continuing along this thread today, I'm here to talk to you about the importance and relevance of preserving your life experiences, beliefs, ideas, events, and family influences. It is directly because of these attributes that I am an individual today, but it wasn't always true. So let me tell you, if I could have ever known perfection in my life, it was my brother. And I mean this sincerely, because when I was growing up, it was as if God himself said, let there be perfection, and there was my brother. And for those of you anxious girls who are now dying to see what my brother looks like, or perhaps even some of the boys in this auditorium, <laughs> here's a picture. <laughs> This is my older brother. Very, very charming in real life, I guarantee you. Well, let me acclimate you a little bit to my family, um, give you a little bit of information, a little information about my background so you have a better understanding of my narrative. I was born at the start of the 80s to my parents, joining my brother a year after his birth. Many people thought that we were twins. And as twins, or any close-knit siblings growing up together, we did everything imaginable uh, together as two brothers. We ate together, we played together, we bathed together, we wore matching clothes, and we even slept on the same bed. So I knew that my brother was a superhero in my life, and I knew that following his lead would not only be inspiring, admiring, um, but it would also make something out of me. My brother and I, would spend hours playing together, building forts, using pillows and curtains. We would uh, protect our kingdom from imaginary foreign intruders and would often intensify our battles just so that we could add more tragedy and glory to our act. Needless to say, he was of course very good at these activities and as I mentioned, it was a lot of fun following his lead. So, Nevertheless, and to my credit, I did try my best through the years to avoid becoming my brother's clone, but I could not help it. In fact, I couldn't resist it. He was a great athlete. Um, he was a scholarly student and a debonair dresser. He had more friends. He was popular in school, and the girls also liked him. I knew somehow that accepting his greater sense of exposure would guide him through the challenging and tough decisions but I knew that um, if I began to rely on him, that I would start to rely on him for the easier tasks in life, too. My brother's distinct personality traits combined with his confidence in being responsive to changeability made him the natural choice for everyone. Now, as you know, that with time comes change, and it pays a visit to everyone. Change paid me a visit in the year of 1997. I also refer to this year as the year of force majeure. It was also the year in which I believed that I met the world. 1997 is the year in which my parents decided to move from the state of Massachusetts to the state of Connecticut. And for those of you who are wondering about the geography, the state of Massachusetts and the state of Connecticut are two neighboring states, and they're situated on the northeastern corridor of the United States. In 1997, I was a young kid. I was in high school in 11th grade, and I had one full year of, uh, of high school before I would finish and graduate. My brother, on the other hand, was in 12th grade. He was in his final year of high school, and he also happened to be the captain of our wrestling team at the local school that we attended. Now, uh, my brother had uh, scholarship prospects uh, because of wrestling. I had none, though I did wrestle. Um, so I guess it was relatively an easy decision for my parents. It was decreed that he would be allowed to stay behind and finish his education in one piece and that I would move forward 
to Connecticut with my parents. Now, this was the first time in my life ever when I was alone by myself. I had no idea what to do and I didn't know how to start. But I knew that I had to do it on my own and free of my brother's supervision. It was a very, very challenging task. And I really now believe that when I look at things in retrospect, that it was this, this time away from one another and this separation that really led me to become more aware of myself. And I want you all to know that it was a daunting step forward and outward. I could have never imagined that being me would turn out to be so challenging and difficult. I didn't know where to start or what to do. Um, the natural choice for me would have been to continue being my brother's clone, but I knew that I had to stop trying to be him and start wanting to be myself. I recalled that I would be hesitant in sharing my ideas, my goals, my aspirations with my peers out of fear of being ridiculed. And this, of course, stemmed from never having found the initial need to be myself. Uh, <clears throat> Later, when the opportunity arose to be myself and to have an identity, I found, I found it very difficult to be myself. And that's because I didn't know who I was. A, quick, a very quick side note, I now regularly work with young professionals and university level students in, um, I guide them and I coach them during job interviews, I work with them one on one in assisting them in preparing to become better candidates in the market. And one of the most important characteristics that I try and highlight in each and every one of them is their ability to be themselves and a sense of individuality. I did not believe that I was an individual. I didn't believe in myself. And I always thought that my personality wasn't good enough, that my likes and dislikes weren't valid enough. So going back, to, going back really quickly to um, finding myself in this world, I decided to make some very small changes. One of the first things that I consciously made an effort to control was my habit of liking things that I didn't have any interest in. For instance, if I didn't like an activity that I did with my brother back in the day, I immediately stopped it now because I would think that I had an interest in it and now I, I wouldn't. I would be, I guess, confident enough to say that I uh, would not want to pursue it. This really helped me in gaining confidence in myself. I had to make friends after the move to Connecticut, and this time I found people who shared similar interests, who liked doing the things that I wanted to do. <clears throat> and this really helped me in better understanding uh, my, uh, I guess, in having confidence in my ideas, my thoughts, and myself. I also began uh, assuming responsibilities in managing household chores. Now, this greatly improved my exposure to the outside world, but it also it helped me in achieving a few um, other things. It helped me in honoring the individual differences in others, and it also helped me better understand my strengths and my weaknesses. <clears throat> These were some of the observable, observable changes that I made in finding myself but I made countless other changes, from avoiding attempts to becoming my brother's clone, to acquiring a sense of belief in myself, to, um, to honoring individuals and others. I began to sense a likable me. It took me years to reach this level of unyielding self-awareness, and a few more to be present among you all today, but I assure you that it has been a journey of immense reward and personal growth. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in serendipity. I believe that everyone here in this room is here for a reason. Everyone is here for a reason because you either know someone who is an individual or you yourself are a source of inspiration for someone um, in this room. So therefore, if you are or you aren't, I welcome you all to take this opportunity and to find yourself. And I wish the ones much luck who have found themselves on this path. I guarantee you that this will be a journey of a lifetime. Thank you so much.